Oh, what's going on, Game Leapers? This is X. Today's video, the tier list for 13.1. Who wants to know them? Well, we're about to find out, right? So in this video, guys, we're going to be talking about the changes that came in. They actually got released on Twitter, but they will probably go through and they will be the patch notes for 13.1. And these will change how the rift will look at the start of season 13, of course. So make sure you stick around for the whole video to know who the most broken and worst champions are going to be. And of course, if you do actually want to get better at the game, this is just a tier list telling you who to play. How you play is way more important. And that's what we can teach you on the website linked in the description and comment section. Our challenger players and coaches, the best around the world, are uploading so many videos for you to learn and improve and become the best player you can possibly be on the Rift. So check them out and let's get into the tier list. Now, starting off in the top lane, we have Darius, Jax, and Jace. Darius and Jax, I think we can all kind of, you know, understand because at the moment they're very good and that's in every single ELO. But Jace is actually kind of like the newcomer here because of all the changes in 13.1 to that hammer and to your base attack damage. This going up makes your early game, your laning phase a lot scarier and the damage buff you're getting on your W up by 10 in your melee form and also in your melee Q, this is going to be a 35 damage increase at level 9 or five points in your queue, which is just huge. It sounds giga OP, and honestly, it might not be that broken for solo queue, but for pro play, this is going to mean Jace is probably going to be pick and banned, and even in solo queue, if you can pilot this champion, he's going to be very oppressive. Pretty much has no counters as well in the top lane. Then moving down to S tier, a lot of standard champions here who we've seen before. So we have Camille, Fiora, who is getting nerfed in 13.1, but the nerfs aren't really that significant. Yes, you're losing a bit of damage in your passive in the mid to late game, and also from your queue in the mid to late game as well, scaling off your AD, but honestly, during the laning phase with Grasp and with Divine Sunderer and Sheen, Bjora is still going to be a bit of a powerhouse. Same with GP, Garen, Ravenous Hydra, Olaf, we have Riven, Set, Trendemir, all of these champions still going to be good. Now moving down to underrated, we have Cassiopeia who's here. The reason for this is because of Seraph's Embrace. The buff this is getting, so you're getting AP, you're also getting flat ability haste, and you're also getting the shield back that you once had based off your mana. This is going to be huge for Cass. She does very well as well into melee champions in the top lane. Just make sure if you're playing her in the top lane, you're using your Q when the enemy champions actually want something so CS and saving your W from when they actually look to go on you. Same as Cassiopeia rises here because of the buff to Seraphs and also the buff to Rod of Ages. You're getting more HP and also you're getting more movement speed from the passive that they're changing. There's also a bunch of buff fixes and quality of life changes. Now Sejuani is in this list because of some Radiant Virtue tech and Wukong is here because, well, just because he does very well against Jace. So if you are thinking of actually picking a counter to Jace because you just, well, you just can't beat the guy, then the Monkey King is definitely a good pick pick into him. Zach, exactly the same as Sejuani is here because of some Radiant Virtue tech that I will discuss probably in tomorrow's video. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to stick around for that. The other champions affected in 13.1, we have Aatrox. So for Aatrox, the healing from your E when you're in your ultimate got nerfed, also the movement speed got nerfed and your passive's damage got nerfed as well. But honestly, like these aren't really that big. The champion will still be very good as a blind pick, counter pick into a lot of tanky champions. So you guys can definitely pick him, but it might be refreshing because, well, he won't be picked and banned like like he is right now. Now, Dr. Mundo is getting some sizable nerfs, so he's moving down from S tier to A tier, exactly the same with Cassante as well. These champions are copping some pretty big jabs, but they were so strong anyway that their demise is only going down to A tier. Now, Cyan is also a champion in A tier who's actually a champion who got buffed. So your base HP is going up and your maximum Q damage when you charge this up for the most amount of time. This is also getting increased by 20. This is really big for you Cyan mains out there. So those are the champions, guys, probably from A and above who you want to be playing to Elo inflate because again, you're still going to be the same player, right? It's not like these champions are changing how you play. Just make sure you're not playing Lilia because of the Jack Show nerfs. This is going to affect a lot of champions in the top lane and Yasuo because, well, just pick him in the mid lane. Top lane, you're just trying to impress your ego. Now, moving down to the mid lane here, we have Aurelia in Broken, Kassadin and Vex. Now, for Aurelia, one of the big reasons she's here is because Kassadin is going to be super OP. She absolutely crushes him. Also, Aurelia is a bruiser who doesn't rely on Jack Show. So you can go Shield Bow, you can even go like Divine Sundra, maybe even Gore Drinker. You can actually bypass this nerf pretty easily. She has a very good win rate as well in most elos, so Aurelia has to be here. And alongside her, yes, we have Cassidin. Cassidin because of Seras, the buff, Rod of Ages, the buff, and the buffs recently to Cassidy. Like I said in yesterday's Most Broken Champions video, if you don't have him in your champion pool, it's time to play a new game. And the other mid laner probably is a must have in your champion pool. This is Vex, an amazing counter into so many champions because of her amazing gap closing ability and her CC. 
any champion with some sort of engage, it makes it very difficult to jump onto a Vex, and in team fights you can clean house. And I should probably also mention here the buffs to Vex towards the end of Season 12, where your Q's cooldown is on a 4 second, and your AP ratio and that got buffed as well, it's your main ability. Now moving down to S tier, not really much is changing honestly. Akshan, Anivia, Cassiopeia, these have all been here. Lux is here though, because of the Horizon Focus buff. So Horizon Focus, you're getting 15 more AP from the item. Honestly, it's not like too substantial, because as Lux, you might even just want to go maybe uh, Zonya's or even Death Cap second, right? Shadow Flame also. So Horizon Focus, you might not feel this impact straight away, but in the late game, you will feel this AP increase. Silas is here because, well, it's just Silas. Velkos for exactly the same reason as Lux and Xerath as well. These long range artillery mages, they're going to really appreciate the Horizon Focus buff and they were doing well anyway. Victor, Yone Zed, I mean, there's not much to say about these champions. They've been mainstays in S tier or at least S tier for a number of patches. Now, as far as underrated champions go, we have Ari here because lots of people are playing Ari just without Spellbook. Going Ari with Spellbook, the win rate is so much higher. It's just people, well, most of the time in lower elos anyway, just aren't actually abusing this technology. Then we have Corky alongside her because Corky, I believe anyway, with Ravenous Hydra, even though it's been nerfed a fair bit, is actually very good. Like if you can pick Corky into a free lane and scale, you're going to be stronger than anyone post 20, 25 minutes. So watch out for Ravenous Hydra Corky. GP is also here because, well, his win rates and stats, they are just telling us that GP mid works at the moment. We also have Jace because of the buffs, Rise because of Seras and Roa. Talia is also here and we'll get into why she's OP probably again in tomorrow's video. Talon, exactly the same reason. And Twitch, exactly the same reason as well. So if you want to actually know kind of like why these champions are hidden OP, make sure you hit the sub button. The only other champion that's getting buffed is Lissandra. That's why she's moved from B tier to A tier because you're getting more HP per level. Your W's cooldown is going down by two seconds and your Q slow is increasing up to 8% at level nine rank five. These are actual nice buffs. So this is why Lissandra has moved up. She won't just be the Ari LeBlanc counterpick that she's been in pro play for so long. Just be careful of picking any of those champions in CT, guys, because statistically speaking, you have less chance of winning. Now, moving into the last solo role, the jungle, of course. Who's going to be OP in 13.1? Well, pretty much just exactly the same champions. Evelyn, Master Yi, Uda. Just make sure if you're playing Uda, you are maxing your R first and going AP. I know the Jack Show is getting nerfed, but honestly, once you get Demonic Embrace, it's like all you need. Now, other strong contenders for OP junglers, of course, we have Belveth, Echo, at least Fiddlesticks, Graves, Kindred, Maokai, who might appreciate, well, I should have mentioned this for top lane, but he might appreciate the Winter's Approach buff. So you're getting more HP and the cost of the item as well is going down by 100. So Maokai will appreciate this. Then we have Rengar, Shaco who's getting buffed. So as far as your AD ratio goes, this is getting buffed by 5%. This means in the mid to late game, you will be stronger as far as your two shift poison goes. The actual damage in your Q as well. So your backstab is getting buffed too. This is kind of nice, but honestly, it's not going to change too much for AD Shaco. And of course you have your Q's mana cost going down by 20. Again, it doesn't really change too much because you're not really thinking on Shaco. Oh, I'm so close to going Oom. Like very rarely are you thinking that. It's mostly just about damage and even just clearing camps as quick as other junglers. Those are the bigger issues. Now, Zac is here, kind of like how I mentioned before, Raging Virtue, the champion is actually very strong. As long as you can actually get to level four, because that's when you actually have decent range in your E, you should be sweet to have a good impact in a game. Now, as far as underrated champions go, we have Shadow Assassin, Kane here, Blue Kane, and ever since he got buffed a couple of patches ago, he's actually been flying under the radar. And again, I will explain this in a future video. Then we have Ramus here. Yes, I understand that Ramus, it looks as if he's getting nerfed pretty hardcore, but honestly, it's not too bad. Like, Jack Show is going to benefit tanky champions who are actually building armor and magic resists from items. Ramus is one of them. Also, as far as the W change goes, it's weaker in the early game, right? But in the mid to late game, this is actually going to be a buff. So it's all not that bad. Even if you're losing base AD, I still think his win rate is going to be very good indeed. And then Sejuani is here, a bit like Zach, Radiant Virtue Sej. Now, elsewhere in the tier list, we have champions like Lilia who have gone down a bit because of the Jack Show nerfs. We also have Dr. Mundo because of his nerfs going all the way down to C tier if you're going to play the dock, just play him in the top lane. So that is your jungle tier list, guys, for 13.1. And by the way, if you guys have any questions or thoughts, because no doubt lots of people do, then let us know in the comment section. Now, AD carry tier list, who's going to be picked in 13.1? Caitlyn, Draven, Lucian, Twitch. Now, honestly, I'm pretty sure our 12-23 tier list was exactly the same. These four champions are not getting hit at all next patch. So for Caitlyn, your range, lethal tempo, pretty much having zero counters, you're probably going to be the number one AD carry. So if you can't play Caitlyn, and it is actually kind of difficult to play this champion properly because you're picking her to win lane and snowball, right? So if you can't do that, if you can't position properly, use your abilities properly, use your traps off your teammate CC, you're going to be struggling to really make use of this champion, right? Now, Draven is another one who's difficult to play. Probably the most difficult AD carry, 
right? So again, check out our website for all the Draven guides you will ever need. But he's very strong too. Even if Eclipse got nerfed a couple of patches ago, all you need is Serrated Dirk and the Lethality from that. So Draven, Caitlyn, then we have Lucian, especially if you pair Lucian with Nami, but even with other shielding supports. You might have Kami, you might have Lulu, Renata Glass is also good with Lucian, and then we have Twitch because, well, Twitch is an invisible champion, so he has to be Giga OP. Now moving down to S tier, we have a bunch of champions here you guys can pick. We have Jin, Kaisa, Nyla, Samira, Tristana, Varus. Just be a little bit careful about picking champions maybe like Kaisa and Samira and maybe Jin because you do have some hard counters, right? Picking Varus is probably your best blind pick champion alongside Tristana maybe from S tier. So just be careful about just insta-locking these champions because you might get hard countered by the enemy bot lane. Now in underrated, we only have one champion. This is Zaya, who's actually getting some sizable buffs for 13.1. So your base attack speed is getting buffs and your attack speed ratio. This means for an attack speed based champion well you're getting more attack speed this is meaningful this is big and Zyra already at the moment even though you're probably picking her as a counter pick to lots of engaged champions you might even be able to blind pick this champion if this buff is going to be as big as what it could be of course we'll have to wait and see i am just forecasting but still no doubt she will be definitely better now as far as the other champions go guys we have zeri who's getting nerfed in 13.1 this is why she's going from s tier down to a tier but you probably can still pick her even though your scaling as far as your attack damage goes is getting nerfed and the actual damage from your Q is getting nerfed. These aren't like huge nerfs, honestly. You're still going to be able to play this champion. Just try to play Zeri when you have like a Lulu or a Yumi as a support. Yumi getting nerfed as well might make her a little bit worse, but her attack speed buff is staying the same, right? So it shouldn't really change too much. Apart from this, just be careful of picking Infelios, Ezra, or Sivir. Statistically speaking, again, these champions just aren't going to give you the wins you're probably after. Now, the final tier list to go through, of course, these are the supports and guys, the supports for 13.1 as far as broken goes. Blitzcrank, Lulu, Janna, Nami. These champions are just uncontestable. Blitzcrank does so well into all three of these champions, by the way. So as far as the meta picks and most popular picks go in every single elo, Blitzcrank loves it. Even if his Q damage at later ranks got nerfed, who cares? You still have 100 damage at level one, right? If you can land a rocket grab, they're going to die, especially with the base damage buff to your ultimate at level six. It's a champion go boom moment. Now, Lulu, despite getting nerfed recently, honestly, She's played so much and to still have over a 50% win rate and S plus tier champion, it's impossible for me not to put her in broken tier. Exactly the same as Janna and exactly the same as Nami, especially if you compare Nami with Lucian. Now, S tier champions, Amumu, kind of the same reason as Blitzcrank, right? Does very well into Lulu, Janna, Nami. If you land one bandage toss, they're probably going to die. But just because, well, statistically, does so well in every single elo. Lux is here, maybe because of the Horizon Focus buff, but honestly, with Caitlyn being so strong as she is, Lux just automatically goes up a tier or two. Renata, Sona, and Soraka are here as well, pretty much for the same reason Bard, Lulu, Jan, and Nami are here, because according to the win rates, they are the best champions. It might have something to do with the fact that, well, before anyway, Jack Show champions and Bruisers and Fighters were so strong and dominating the Rift, Ravenous Hydra champions as well. You can buff these, right? You are Enchantresses. Now, as far as underrated champions go in the Sephora, where yeah, Thresh, because he's just difficult to play. The recent buffs, it feels like Thresh has kind of been forgotten about, but if you can pilot this champion and play him well, and we will teach you how to do that on our website, he's actually broken. A good Thresh feels impossible, really, really difficult to play against. And Twitch is here because he has an invis. Now, apart from this, guys, in the A and B tier, they are stacked full of supports, and all of these are viable. You can pick any of these. Just be a little bit careful picking kind of off-meta supports like Galio and Pantheon. Better to pick these in other roles they're actually good at, like the mid lane, for example. And just be very careful about picking picking Yumi because she is getting nerfed next patch. So the Q damage, both forms of it are getting nerfed up to 50 at level 5. So be a little bit wary of this. But those were the tier lists, guys. Those were the tiers for 13.1. Leave a like down below if you want these videos to continue. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in our next Season 13 upload. This has been it. Peace.